a backlash of fear. Uh, and so we are in the process of deciding or reaffirming what America is. Uh, I read an op-ed column not, rec not too long ago uh, from a teacher uh, who uh, teaches English language to uh, young children who are immigrants or from immigrant families. And what the new culture uh, that uh, President Trump has brought with its emphasis on uh, anti-immigrant uh, philosophy, if you will, uh, with its emphasis on building walls to keep people out. Uh, what this has done to these families and these children. Uh, what is done to the population where <clears throat> people are yelling terrible things, uh, doing terrible things, out of fear. And out of this is coming uh, a moment, a moment of truth, if you will, in which we do and will choose how we go. Um, this woman taught in Nashville, and interesting to me, um, according to her article, uh, Nashville has one of the fastest growing immigrant populations in the country. Close to 12% of the city's residents are foreign born and 30% of public school students speak a language other than English at home. Uh, and that's just Nashville, the, that's the big city in, uh, in Tennessee. Uh, and the city has made a point, she says, of welcoming international newcomers, despite the actions of the Tennessee General Assembly. Uh, which, um, perhaps has a more conservative approach to, uh, to the situation. Apparently, um, in the city, uh, the schools don't inquire about immigration status and offer mentors to foreign-born families. Um, workers at the city's public libraries help newcomers apply for citizenship, and the Metro Police don't check the immigration status uh, of uh, people when they are pulled over for things like traffic violations. And even in this uh, atmosphere, there's an uh, 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 uneasiness. Uh, she says 70% of Nashville residents support a path to citizenship for undocumented immigrants. But what happened was, because of the sort of reactionary elements that surround the big cities, there is a, a, a sharp uh, pullback, if you will, uh, and this president is one to kind of exacerbate that. Apparently, immigration and customs enforcement agents posed as Metro police officers during a recent roundup of uh, Kurdish uh, uh, residents of Nashville. Uh, and that certainly was a frightening scenario for these children and their families. Well, this is the kind of thing that's happening around the country now. Uh, we've certainly seen 
what people are 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 saying about the uh, the caravan of, uh, of uh, refugees that are uh, asking or planning to ask for asylum here in this country, uh, fleeing from violence and uh, terror in their country, uh, only do they face a certain amount of fear in this country too. Uh, several weeks ago, <coughs> our President Trump declared himself to be a nationalist. And this is in line with a rising tide of nationalism that is occurring in, around the world. Um, Brazil's new president has a very nationalistic streak. It's happening in Europe, where uh, fear of immigrants is really on the rise, as well as anti-Semitism. In the weeks that followed um, Mr. Trump's <coughs> coming out as a nationalist, there have been shootings and violence. Of course, the shootings uh, in Pennsylvania, uh, where a synagogue was attacked, and, and uh, I think it was 13 or 14 or more uh, Jewish people were murdered. There was another shooting just recently, uh, more violence. So we are fast coming to the point where we do have to decide what is America. Is it a place uh, that is multicultural or is it a place where there is one dominant race of people who make the decisions for everyone else? And maybe some people get into the country and maybe some people don't. Uh, this is kind of what we're sorting out now. And when I, when I talk about the Hiyoka medicine, you know, the medicine of the clown, I don't mean to be flippant about it. As, as uh, clownish as it may be in some aspects, it's very serious. It's quite serious when things are thrown into chaos. But I just want to make the point clear that they're being thrown into chaos for a reason. Chaos has a purpose. And its purpose is to uh, mix things up so that a new, more stable consciousness can emerge. And that's what I believe is happening. And it's not going to happen overnight. And I do believe we are going to have to continue to deal with a, a fearful energy that's being that's thrown at us. And we have to be able to navigate through that fearful energy and continue to hold the vision of peace and optimism and plenty and healing. And that's not going to be easy. But one of the ways we do it is similar to what I talked about at the top of the show. When you can't avoid those things that are thrown at you, do the opposite. Go into them. Feel everything that makes you feel. And then bring the truth, bring the awareness that what is appearing to you is not real, is an illusion. Illusion created in part by your higher self so that you can recognize it, so that you can take the power back from it, 
and emerge bigger and stronger than ever before. It's hard not to give in to fear, and if you are someone who is afraid of uh, a changing society in which maybe you feel like you're not going to be, uh, uh, you know, your needs are not going to be met because of all these other people that are coming into the world. That's an understandable fear. So our vision has to include you know, everyone. No exclusion. As much as we may want to uh, marginalize uh, certain types of people uh, that we don't agree with, we can't afford to do that. Everyone has to be able to feel the energy of positive growth, of soul growth, if you will, of uh, expanding consciousness. Everyone needs to be able to feel uh, protected. And until that, you know, vision is put forward, until more people are holding that vision, we'll have these kinds of, uh, these kinds of incidents. You know, as if you are not a, uh, if you're not a Trump supporter, uh, you may find some of his more passionate uh, supporters uh, a little hard to take. But you can't afford to let them make you angry, and you can't afford to um, marginalize them either. They are some. They are acting. in a way that is in accordance with what their belief is, what their fears are. They are acting in a way that they believe is protective of the things that they need. So it's helpful to understand that and proceed from there. You don't have to agree with them. You don't even have to like what they're saying. But we have to find a way in which these people can feel better about themselves and the world around them. And that takes giving them a vision that they can get behind. And right now, the vision they get behind is the one that uh, Hayoka Medicine, uh, in the form of uh, Donald Trump, is supplying to them. When you're frustrated, kicking the doors down and throwing the pieces of the game on the floor uh, sometimes has a very cathartic feel to it. It's a lot of what's going on right now. So, what is America? That's our, that's up to us. It's up to us to define that, redefine that now. All right, need to move on and to get to our mushroom portion of, uh, or our continued discussion of, of Mushroom Man himself, Paul Stamets. Uh, so uh, if you happen to be a Star Trek fan like me, you may also recognize the name of Paul Stamets um, as a character in uh, the latest installment of, uh, of Trek series. Uh, Star Trek Discovery. Uh, he actually becomes a character uh, as a science officer uh, specializing in astromycology, the study of fungus in space, <laughs> mushrooms in space. Um, and his character uh, uses mushrooms uh, to create a uh, 
propulsion system uh, that